Hello everybody and welcome to part 18 of the Blender 2.80 Absolute Beginners course where we will further explore the tools of the edit mode and this time that's gonna be the knife tool and the mirror tool. So let's start with the knife. We can activate it by pressing the key, uh, the K key, sorry, on the keyboard and you can see it changes the cursor to this scalpel-like icon and once I point it to the geometry, you can see this grand pix a green pixel appearing at the tip of it. So now I'm going to left click and start clicking around the mesh. So you can see those newly created red points are aligned to the geometry. And now when I want to close the, the newly created shape, I just click on it and apply the shape by pressing enter key and you can see we now have new vertices created on our cube when I switch to the face select mode select one of the faces and press E key to extrude it you can see the newly created face uh, follows the shape we've just cut using the knife tool so I can do the same here and do the same here the knife tool is very useful when working on more precise models and we will get to that in the two upcoming videos. But let's now see what else we can do with the knife tool. As most of the tools in Blender 2.80, knife tool can be also accessed from the menu on the left, which is hidden under the T key. So you can see we have it here and now it's active by default. So once I start left clicking anywhere around an object, the new vertices are then created. So I accept them by pressing the enter key. And now I need to switch to the extrude tool in order to work on these further. So I also I will also switch to the faces here, select the newly created pieces of geometry and well, simply extrude them like this. A knife tool also has an alternative working mode which indicates which is indicated by this little triangle here and this is called bisect tool so let's see how it works on a bit different object so let me create a cylinder to show you how it works and now in the edit mode once I select the bisect tool and I have nothing selected uh, when I click around with the left, left mouse button, you can see this error appears and that means we need to have something uh, selected in order for this tool to work. So now with those faces active, I will left click and drag and you can see we have this new edge loop appearing and once I release my left mo mouse button, we have this new gizmo visible here. So what this gizmo does, it allows me to move this newly created cut around and adjust it. When I left click and drag on the blue circle, it's a bit hectic, it allows me to rotate the section around the mesh and the arrow moves it along the faces. As with the other tools, again we have this window available here, which also allows us changing the position and everything manually like that and it also allows us filling the newly created opening with the geometry so let me do it right now you can see once I click it we now have a new face visible here it's not visible at the moment but once I delete the upper vertices like that you can see we now have this very very clean shape. So that would be it, at least for now. As for the knife tool, let's see how the mirror tool works. To explain the mirror tool, I will very quickly create a model that will require using it. So let's say you are modeling, uh, let's call it a table. So we have a table top and using the techniques we already explained in the previous videos, I will add a loop cut here and I will add two loop cuts like this and scale them within the Y 
axis. So let's say you want to create table legs and to do that we will simply extrude those two faces downwards. And let's say this is the situation you end up with. So you have a model like this and now you would like to have those legs visible here. Obviously you could create an edge loop and extrude them as we just did. But what if you want to have exactly the same dimensions or what if the, this model site is already much more complex and detailed than this one. So what we have to do is simply cutting the object in half and I will adjust this newly created loop to the 3D cursor. So I will change the pivot point to 3D cursor, press S, Z, oops, S, X and 0 and enter. Now I will delete this side of the model. So we have a very clean element we will now mirror. So to mirror this element, unfortunately, in difference to the knife tool, we don't have a mirror tool available from the menu on the left and you have to find it under the mesh tab here. So you can see we have a mirror option available. And once I simply click the first thing we have here on the top of the list, nothing really changes. And that's because I have to now define in which axis the operation will take place. So let's change the view to this perspective and activate the tool once more. And now when I press Z, you can see we have our table flipped. When I press X, you can see it changes its position to this side. And everything, all the operations happen around the 3D cursor at the moment. But what if I move the cursor here and now activate the mirror operation? By the way, you can see the shortcut for that here. So if I press X right now, you can see now I'm pressing Z, X again. You can see everything is happening around the 3D cursor. And that's because it's our active pivot point at the moment. So let's say if I change it to the median point and I will activate the move tool, you can see my gizmo is here. So when I press control key and hit M and activate the mirror tool and I press X right now, you can see the model is flipping around this area. So let's do it again, but now within the Z axis, like this, and you can see we are able to mirror the geometry, the mesh. And you could say, Lech, why not simply rotate the object and I will have the mirror op operation uh, as much happening as what you're showing me right now. Well, that could work, but if we have some disproportion like this, now you are not able to rotate it because when I duplicate the object, move it to the side and rotate it within the Z by 180 degrees, you can see, well, it doesn't match as we want to. So how do we practically use the mirror tool? First off, as you have seen, we need to duplicate the geometry. So I'm gonna press Shift D. And now when I hit escape the newly duplicated object, it's still visible here. Now I can press Ctrl M and let's say the X key and simply move it around here. And now I would have to connect those two pieces together so we can do it by pressing the F key multiple times. And by the way, you see it that didn't connect here because we have faces visible. So we would have to delete them like this. Select edge here and press F again. And that could be an option. Or let me delete those two edge loops. Create a new one somewhere here. And let's delete this half of the object again. Or we could actually move the 3D cursor to this area 
and use it as a pivot point for the entire operation. So let's do this right now. I'm going to select those vertices, press Shift S, move cursor to selection. I'm going to change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Select everything, Shift D for duplicate, escape, and now Control M and X. And boom, you can see we have it now aligned as we want it. Uh, the only thing we have left, if I hover my mouse cursor here and press L, as you remember, this selects a linked objects in edit mode. When I press G, you can see the objects are still not connected. So if you paid attention in the previous videos, if I select everything, now I need to merge those two pieces of geometry. And to do that with my vertex selected here, I just right click and choose remove double vertices. You can see here the amount of vertices removed because just a short rewind, what we have here right now are the vertices that share exactly the same location in space. It doesn't seem like, but if I select one of them, you can see just one of one edge of the geometry is highlighted, meaning if I press G, we have this situation happening here with literally every vertex. So to fix that, we need to remove the double vertices. And again, I select everything, right click and remove double vertices. Remember, you need to be in the vertex mode because when I'm in face or in edge modes, uh, these options I have available on right click change accordingly. If using the mirror tool from edit mode was too complicated, there is also an option to use a special modifier for that. So I will very quickly create a new uh, base mesh for, for a table. But this time we will only create one corner of it. So let's create two edge loops um, and let's extrude this leg downwards. Let's align everything a little bit from, from the side view. Mm -hmm. Move this down and let's remove those faces on. Oh, let's maybe leave them. Okay, so the modifiers are available under this icon here. And when you click this button here, you have the whole list of modifiers available in Blender. The one we are going to focus on right now is the mirror here. So let's click it and automatically you can see there is a duplicate of our geometry created. So when I go to the edit mode, I'm not able to touch this part of the object. But as soon as I change anything around here, you can see this ghost object, let's call it this way, also changes. What we can do with the modifier is not only creating one uh, ghost or mirror of the object, we can also do it in many other uh, axes. So let's select Y here. And you can see we now have four legs of a table. If we use the Z, you can see we can also mirror our object within the uh, vertical axis, but let's not do it right now. And you may be wondering what's the orientation point for this modifier to work. And if I move our object somewhere, you can see this pivot point here is the place, is the origin of this entire operation. So if I enter the edit mode right now, select this mesh. And as you remember in edit mode, the origin point stays untouched. If I move it, you can see we are able to actually match the pieces together if we want to, obviously, but let's say we want. So I move this part somewhere here. Now I just select those vertices and yeah, in, and now you might wonder how do we make it precisely right? 
So the best way for me to do it would be focusing the 3D cursor at the origin point. So let's do that. Shift S, cursor to active. Now let's enter the edit mode, change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Now I'm gonna scale those vertices to this position. So S, uh, X right now and zero. So now we know those vertices are aligned. Let's do the same for this side. S, Y and zero. And yeah, this way we are able to create a table. How about that? And you can also modify it pretty easily right now. So if we just move this corner around, you can see the whole size of the table increases. At this point, the last step would be simply applying the modifier. So we have all of those ghost objects available in the edit mode as well. So in order to do that, we can simply click apply button here. Once you do that and enter the edit mode, you can see the newly created meshes are now available for us. Uh, one thing you need to keep in mind, you can see if I switch to the face mode, we have faces available here inside of the object. And that's a thing that should be avoided at all cost in Blender or in any other 3D application because, well, because it doesn't work like that in 3D and um, it's pretty hard to explain. It's a little bit more advanced topic, but if you learn how to create 3D models correctly from the very beginning, believe me, that will benefit you in the long run. So try to remember not to create any so-called hidden faces inside of the object. We will learn actually a little bit more about that in the next video where I'm gonna dis uh, talk about the subdivision modifier, which is available here and you can see what it does. So, but that's gonna be story for another video. Right now, I wanna thank you for watching this tutorial. I really hope it was informative. Please remember to check out the link in the video description where I leave the notes on the shortcuts I was using and some other, uh, well, useful information on modeling and Blender in general. And yeah, see you in the next video where we are gonna talk about the subdivision modifier. Bye-bye.